Hey guys, welcome to the rating climb from 1,000 to 1,200. Let's find some games. All right, we've got the first game. We are white. It's a 15-10, so uh, 10 second increment. And he's playing the Scandinavian, so I'll take it. And I'll play the main line, knight c3. Okay, queen d8. I think the main line is like uh, queen a5, but I'll just play d4 and just develop my pieces and try to control the center. Pretty straightforward. Um, so I'll go bishop d3 just to kind of counterattack the bishop on this diagonal here. Okay, e6 is kind of weird because now when I take it, uh, his pawns are going to be messed up. Um... So I think I will do that, mess up the pawn structure, and then I'm also going to castle early and with the idea that I'd like to bring my rook here before he can get out of the center. Now he is going to be able to play bishop e7 and, and castle, um, but still a good, a good open file for my rook to be on. And this could be a target, especially if he castles that way. Okay, so now I'm thinking the first move that comes to mind is do I want to just pin the knight and threaten to take it next move? Or I could take it right away and then pin the pawn. You know, the problem with that is then you can play f5. So it seems like pinning it right away makes the most sense. I'm just scanning, like kind of checking if any other moves make sense. Bishop here, bishop here. I don't think so. And so I will just go ahead and, and pin the knight. And so it looks like a free pawn. Um, just making sure that nothing bad's going to happen to my rook after I take it. I don't see anything, so I will go ahead and just take the free pawn. All right, so at this point, uh, I need to finish developing. Uh, I'm also, now that I know where his king's going to be, I can think about using this rook to attack his king. Now I can't go to h4, but I could go to g4 and maybe try to do something there. So I am considering that move. Um, there's f5 and I'd have to move maybe back to g3 and something like bishop d6, rook h3. So that's one plan. The other plan would be to just simply develop this bishop maybe to like f4. If I go here, I'd be setting up to go bishop h6. He could defend with that. Alternatively, I could also even play just a move like queen e2, lining up more on the open file and pressuring the bishop. So there's a lot of options here. At this point, um, trying to just figure out which one, you know, do I like the look of the best. And so since it seems like they're all somewhat okay um general rule when i'm not sure I, I just go with the most straightforward and so in this case i think that would be just developing the bishop and so i will just develop it to a good square and so that's something that you can remember in your games if you're if you're ever in a situation where you have like three or four different moves and you can't figure out which one to do a lot of times the best move is just the one that's the most straightforward. So in this case, I haven't, you know, de finished developing. And so just developing the bishop, we can go back and check later, like if rook g4 was better. But, you know, I'm pretty sure that there's nothing wrong with this move. It's just a nice common sense kind of move. You can't really go wrong with those type of moves. So I think that's okay. Okay, and so I'm gonna play c3, and the idea is I'm just taking away some squares from his knight and his bishop, also defending this pawn, and so I don't have to worry about that. Even if I wanna move these pieces later, this is still gonna be defended. Also, c3 is you know a nice move to let out my queen. And so at this point, the most obvious plan to follow up with is going to be like 
queen e2 and rook e1, just getting a triple battery on the open file. Um, I could go to like queen b3 to put some pressure here and here. Um, but I think I really just want to get complete control of the file. So I'm going to just go with this plan and bring the rook over later. Okay, so I'm just looking like, where is he trying to go with the knight? I'm not worried about that. He can't even go there right now, but even if he did, it's not really threatening anything. Can't go there. Um, maybe he's moving that because he wants to play c5. Again, not really worried or concerned. Um, I've got this well protected. I could even just trade it off. So I'm just going to go back to the plan and triple up over here. So now we actually have a threat to win the bishop if he doesn't move it. And so... I'm not sure maybe he's going to play king f8. Because if he moves the bishop, well then we're, we're winning the rook as well. So king f8 or knight can go back to c6 are really his only two options that I'm seeing. If he goes back, I'm thinking of playing d5. Okay, queen there. Um... Just loses the piece. I'm just trying to see if there's anything that I need to worry about. I don't see anything, so I'm just going to take the, the free piece. And he's trying to defend it, uh, but it's just not enough. Um, can see how strong the triple battery is. This is just going to be checkmate. All right, let's go find another game. All right, here's a 10 minute game. We're white again against an 1173. And uh, I will play the King's Gambit just to mix it up. Um, okay, so he's going to decline it. And we'll just play knight f3. And the point with the king's gambit is to pile up some pressure here. A lot of times you get a half open f file and you can attack the king that way. So I'm going to put the bishop on an aggressive diagonal and pay attention to tricks uh, along this diagonal. So knight to g5. Um, looks like a pretty good threat. It's very similar to the two knights defense um, with the addition of these two moves instead of like without them. Yeah, so I think that's going to be fine. So I'll go for that. The only way he can, he can defend this is by playing d5. And then I'm going to take it. We can almost go into like a fried liver attack, but with like an extra move f4 thrown in there, which I want to say is probably it's probably a good thing for me, just because it allows the allows me to castle and have the rook open. So I think this is a good version of of the two knights uh, defense for me. So one of the things, when somebody lines up a bishop on f7 or c7, um, you want to plan ahead, especially if there's a knight that can attack it. So like he's thinking a lot right now, I guess, because he didn't probably didn't consider this move. And so sometimes, you know, there's easy ways to defend it. Sometimes, like in this case, there's not, and he has to play d5 to, to stop that. So you always want to be looking ahead for these squares. If they're being attacked by one piece, you want to start like a bishop, you want to see if the knight's going to be able to come in later. And so now he's, you know, having to give up um, a pawn, which is not what you want to do. So I'll take it with the knight. And then put the bishop in there. I think I played a game. I don't know if it was in the uh, previous video series, but very similar to this. It might have actually been the exact same. Um, all right, so I'm thinking about just castling. Um, to get this rook involved. I'm thinking about knight c3 to defend this pawn. 
or d3, because then it lets the bishop out to take this. Um, I'll just go ahead and castle. I like getting my king out of the center, and it's especially good for this rook because of the, uh, you know, when the f-pawn's gone, the rook is much more effective. And once I take this pawn shortly, um, yeah, the rook's going to do a lot. Okay, so he's attacking the bishop. i got to deal with that. Um, I could go all the way back and let him trade it. I could come over here. Hmm. I could just go to like c4. I think I like this move only because... Like, if I go to c4, he might play d5, and then my bishop's getting kind of chased around. And if I go here, then the knight can trade uh, trade for it. Over here, I'm going to keep this. And this is a really strong bishop controlling all these light squares. So I, I really would like to keep it on the board if possible. And then same thing with, like, d5 or f5 that the knights could just trade it off. So, yeah, I'm going to go with uh, bishop h3 for those reasons. And even though this pawn is hanging, it's not really hanging because we can pin it with like the queen or the the rook, and then if he defends it, we can play like d3, and I think we're just winning a piece. So I don't think he can really take that. This diagonal have to pay attention to, but right now his his bishop and queen can't get there, so that's okay. Looks like he wants to castle. Um, I don't like the knight just sitting here, and since I have an easy way to chase it away with c3, I think I'm going to do that. So now I'm considering where's he going to go to if I do that. Well, he can't go here, he can't go here, he can't go here, he can't go here. He's probably just going to have to go back to uh, where he came from, and then I can play like d4. I may have to play d3 to defend that, but yeah, I think that's fine. So I'll play this. I'm expecting knight c6, and then... Let's see, what if I play d4 and he takes this pawn? Can I do anything at that point? Because before I had a pin, if he did that right, um, I could bring my rook over and it would be a pin. Now it's not a pin because the bishop's there. And so I do have to f consider, like, let's say I play d4 and he takes that, what do I do? I can go check, and then g6, and then I can bring my queen over to like d5 and attack the knight, or I can go to h6. Or I can play a more kind of a conservative move with just like d3. I could even take this with the rook uh, to defend it that way. He's going to be able to castle then. Although if he castles, I have queen b3 and then I could take here, which looks pretty good. So I'm leaning towards d4, letting him take, and then I think this queen h5 move looks pretty good. I like the fact that it's going to probably force him to play g6, which is going to create some weaknesses. Um, I'm giving up the pawn on e4 to do it, but then queen d5 after looks pretty solid. So I'm going to go with that, play d4. And one of the things that you'll notice um, that happens in the king's gambit a lot of times is like, Sometimes these queenside pieces don't get developed right away, and that's because there's just so much happening on the king side that a lot of times um, you don't always have time to develop them. Like if there's, you know, moves with your queen or your rook or bishop, whatever, you know, you have to kind of react pretty quickly. So uh, d5, okay. Um, I'm, I'm thinking about playing e5 because it looks like a really nice pawn chain. It's going to kick the knight away. He is going to have a hole on e4 if I do that. So, you know, that's something that I need to think through. Am I okay with that? But, you know, if I capture, then I think it allows his queen to come to a pretty nice central square where it's doing a lot, and I don't really want to allow that. So, I think it makes sense to just push. And yes, I'm giving up a hole here, but it's not really a big deal. I can even, like, play knight 2 and trade it off if I want right away. Um, or I can kind of just play around it, which is what I think I'm going to do. So I'm I, like, I want to play here. Like I said, it's going to force him to play g6, most likely, which is going to create some weaknesses. And then I can go maybe, let's see, can I go to h6? b6, 
Bishop can come here. My queen can go there. Rook goes over. That looks good for me. I don't know what else he can do. So here, here, queen h6. He can play... No, he can't play queen d7. My bishop's... Um, yeah, he's not going to have a lot of moves, really, that he can play. Bishop g5, queen there. Rook comes over. I'm going to take this. I think that looks good. Uh, the other option would be maybe just taking here and then playing knight d2. But then I allow him to castle. And if he's able to castle, his rook gets involved. His king is much safer. Um, I don't think I want to do that. So I think queen h5 is, is the move. I'm expecting g6. And then, like I said, I'm going to play queen h6. And, you know... Queen h6 does a couple things. Number one, it stops him from castling. And then number two, I have ideas of coming into g7 and threatening the rook. And the bishop maybe can come in. We have checkmate threats. So there's a lot um, of ideas. And so the only move that I was concerned about was like bishop here to see if my queen was going to be trapped. But I am able to go there attacking the rook and then after he moves I can take this and then I have this square to go to so it looks fine so I'll go for that but you know you do have to be careful when you're moving your queen like this yeah that it doesn't get trapped from something like this but I already you know looked at that and I was fine with it so I'll go queen g7 so I think he has to play rook f8 to save the rook and then I'm looking for tactics. Uh, it looks like everything's kind of defended. Like I have the bishop and queen here, but the queen guards it, so it's not checkmate. And I mean, I can go here, but he's gonna have everything kind of defended. So I think the best move is just gonna be to take the pawn and then set up an attack on this. So I'm just scanning if there's any other moves. I can't actually take this pawn anymore right now because he's got it defended. So yeah, I think I mean, e6 is a move, but I don't think it's as good as just taking this pawn. The nice thing about taking this pawn is that g6 is um, a follow-up threat. And how's he going to defend that? Knight here is it one move. Queen can't defend it. Rook can't go there. Yeah, so I only, th I only see knight e7 to defend that. Okay, queen e7, yeah, so it doesn't defend this, so I think I just want to take that. Trading queens doesn't really make sense. Um, 3, 6, 3, 6, 7, I mean, I am up a pawn, but, you know, I'm the one kind of doing the attacking on his king, and so you don't want to trade queens if you're attacking, you want to keep them on the board. And this is also a free pawn, so I will take it. I have to be a little careful, because once I take this pawn, you know, my king is going to be potentially under attack from his rooks at some point if he's able to I don't know somehow maneuver that around and get his rooks involved so I'm going to try to prevent that but it is a risk when you take the pawns in front of your king like that um, but I think it's fine because he's not able to castle just yet and so I'm going to make it my mission to not let him castle and and get that other rook over here uh, which this bishop I mean it's going to be really hard for him to castle right with that bishop there but um just something to, to kind of watch out for. If he plays queen f7 now, yeah, it looks like I have to trade the queen because I don't think I have any places to go to, right? Um, I can't take this because the knight can't really go anywhere else. I could go here, but it's still going to be a trade. So at this point, it looks like I have to take it. Um, just looking if there's any other options. I don't really see anything. So I will trade the queens. And I'm up several pawns, so that's fine. Um, looks like I have a fork here on these guys. So I think I'll just do that. Take another pawn. It is going to allow him to castle, so it's risky. But actually, it's not going to allow him to castle because his knight's going to be hanging. So that's fine. Now he's got to deal with the knight. 
And so at this point, I'm up enough pawns. Uh, I'm going to start trying to trade off pieces. I really need to get these developed now. Okay, he, he resigned. I had enough pawns that all I had to do was trade off and, um, you know, win the end game. Let's find another game. All right, next game, we're black. Here we go. Maybe. There we go. We'll play the uh, Scandinavian, like usual. Sorry, my uh, mic is not cooperating. All right, I'm gonna go with the normal move, knight of six. Normal move for me. So this is just a easy recapture. Okay, and so even though the queen's coming out early, it's fine because there's no knight here to attack it. And so, sorry, uh, not really worried about that. I will go ahead and pin it just to be a little bit aggressive, develop a piece and also put some pressure on the knight. Uh, I'll probably play knight c6 next and maybe castle queenside. Yep. And I also am thinking about this bishop, I might wanna play e6 or e5 and then develop this somewhere, usually d6 or c5. Okay, so I wanna attack his king. Um, I'm already like set up to castle queenside. I could do that immediately. Um, but what I wanna do, I think is play e6 and bring this bishop to this diagonal. Cause sometimes they can like play, you know, d3 and then put the bishop there. And it, this is just a really good aggressive di diagonal for my bishop. So I think that's what I wanna do. Um, you know, I can always castle later, so. The other option is I could play e5 um, to try to take away the d4 square from him, but I think I'll go with e6 and I'll, I'll let him play d4 with the idea of just getting control of this diagonal. And then maybe I'll bring my queen over at some point and, and we can have a little checkmate threat on h2. We've already got the bishop in place to capture the knight. Okay, so h3. Um, I don't want to take it because then it puts his bishop in a really nice, aggressive diagonal. So I'm just going to go back. If he plays g4, it's it's very risky to open up your king like that. So I'm fine with that. And so I'll just kind of keep the pressure here and look to play this move next. Okay, so I'm thinking bishop d6. Um... You do have to, one thing I do have to be careful about is like c4 and then I have to move my queen somewhere, but it looks like maybe a5 and then if he plays c5, I can just go back and I think that's okay. So yeah, I'll do that. Um, the issue with if he, if he plays c4, c5, yeah, he gains a tempo and chases my bishop away. But then once I go back, this pawn on, on uh, d4 is going to be a backward pawn. And I'm going to castle and uh, line up on it. Put my bishop here. Sorry, my bishop here. And he's probably going to lose that pawn. And so I think I'm okay with that. Um, the other issue is my queen has to go somewhere. But like I said, it looks like queen a5 is a perfectly fine square. Maybe even queen f5. Now that would allow this fork. But I would you know just sacrifice my, my bishop for it and open up his king and try to get checkmate if that happens. Um, so I have two options. I If he plays c4, I'm not sure which one I'm gonna play. Uh, I'm still thinking about that, but most likely one of those two moves. Kinda wanna play here just to bait this, even though it might not be good. Let's see, it would be check. He'd have to move over. I could go there, check. He'd have to move over. It's not an easy position to defend um, for him. So I think I like that actually. Um, let's see, if I go here, there's also this knight h4 move, but then I think I can take, 
he takes my queen, I'll take his queen. Okay, he so he goes for the more conservative c3 and just kind of defends, um, which is fine. So now I'm thinking castling queenside is the, the move. I don't have to put my king over there. I could also castle kingside and then just sort of, you know, bring my rooks to the center and try to play e5 and, and go about it that way. But I like, like I said, I like being aggressive and attacking. So I will go with castle queenside. And I'm fully aware that like b4, you know, a4, b5, a, like these could be moves that are coming next, right? Um, but that's, you know, that's how it is. Like you have to defend or to attack or figure it out. So we'll deal with that as it happens. Okay, knight g5. So there's a discovered attack here on the bishop. So I got to do something about that. I could retreat or I could just trade. Now, if I trade, he's going to take back. And then there's going to be a threat here. So am I worried about that? I could bring this rook over. It looks okay. Um, if I bring the bishop back, he might play bishop f3. Puts his bishop on a very strong diagonal. I don't think I like that as much. So, uh, for that reason, I will trade it off. And then probably go here. Um, I guess I could play e5 as well. Defends the pawn with the queen. Takes, takes. Hmm. So the question really is, do I want this rook to be here? Or do I want to leave it here and then kind of break open the center like that? What I'm not sure about is if he plays a move like c4 chases my queen somewhere and then comes in here and takes this pawn and he has a fork. That looks like a very real possibility. So for that reason, I think I'm going to play rook f8. Other move is I could play rook d7 and then just double up rooks here. So big question is, do I want to focus my attention on the center um, or do I want to bring it over here and kind of focus on pushing these pawns forward and attack his king? I think I want to do that. Because if I focus on the center, he's just going to bring his bishop here. He's going to bring his rook over. Probably going to trade off a bunch of stuff, going to an even endgame, right? Um, and I'd rather just like attack his king and try to find a tactic to win the game. So because of all that, I'm going to bring this rook over here. And then next move, probably play h6 to kick this knight out of here. And then follow up with like g5, f5, g4. I already have, you know, both rooks kind of ready to go. Bishops aiming that way, queens aiming that way, knight maybe could come over or even like back here. Pretty much have a lot of my pieces ready to go. So it looks like a good plan. And it's going to take a while for him to attack my king on the queen side, right? Like at least one, two, three, four, probably like five moves before he can even start to get an attack going. So seems like I've got time to uh, do stuff over here. All right, so bishop e3. Um, I don't think that changes anything with my plan. And so I'll play h6 to attack the knight. c4, okay. Um, for some reason, I didn't think he could do that. So the reason I didn't think he could do that was because this pawn is not defended anymore. So I'm thinking right now, if I take, 
If he takes my queen, well, then I'm taking his queen with check. He's got to move his king somewhere. And then I'm taking the pawn. So I'm winning two pawns in that exchange. And if he takes here with his bishop, well, I'm just taking the bishop and I'm still winning this pawn. So let's just double check that. He can, I mean, he can bring the rook over, but that doesn't help because it's still with check. He can move his queen. But, or let's say he moves queen here, so he keeps the the pawn defended. Does that actually work? Let's see. There, there. No, then I have knight f3 check, and I win the queen. If he goes queen to d2, then this guy is undefended. I could take it, oh, but then my knight would be hanging. Hmm. All right, so what I'm thinking is, if I take that, he plays queen d2. Okay. All right, I think we're good because I, he may end up taking the knight, which I'm fine with because I'm going to get some pawns. And then I also have this guy hanging at the end of it that I can capture. So it looks fine. I just had to check that the tactics worked. It looks like they do work. So I will capture here with the knight. So just as a recap, if he takes the queen, I'm taking his queen with check and I get a couple extra pawns. Actually, I would take the knight after that and I would get a piece. So that's even better. All right, if he does this, I just take it. I could take the knight too. Um, is that better? No, because then he's got like this and no. So we'll just take the bishop. So we just won the pawn there. And now he's probably going to have to move the knight. Or he could play like rook d1, but I'll just move my queen somewhere in that case. Rook c1. I'm not sure if that was a mouse slip. He meant to go to d1. Or he just forgot that the knight was under attack. Uh, but I'm going to take this free piece. that's actually really good because it opens up the file as well and so now we can really get an attack going I'm thinking like Queen f4 is pretty much unstoppable because if he plays g3 then that guy on h3 is going to be you know captured as well so uh, yeah losing the knight was a was a big big problem so I will go with the plan I'm setting up to come down here with the Queen got the battery and again, if he plays g3, it allows this. Only other move would be... I don't really see a lot of good options for him. Yeah, that's just mate and two. Uh, if he would have moved the queen somewhere, then his king could have like escaped on that square. But in this case, uh, it doesn't work. So I will just go for the checkmate. All right, guys, hope you learned something from 1,000 to 1,200. Be on the lookout for 1,200 to 1,400, which is coming next. Let me know if you have questions or comments. As always, thanks for watching. Stay sharp, play smart, and take care.